from the Delhi studios of Republic TV, it's time for Arnab Goswami on the debate. Arnab Goswami on the debate at 10, powered by Green Lamb, Apollo 24-7 and Poco Mobiles. Welcome back viewers. Yesterday, there was a big deal made about how Russia has claimed it would scale down in Kiev and Cherniv. Cherniv. Some were claiming this is the end of the war or the beginning and the end. But we told you yesterday the talks have failed. And today the non-stop bombarding by Russia is very much proof of it. Tonight Russia must also answer where is the scale down? Let's debate. On Tuesday, after the sixth round of talks in Istanbul, we heard big claims of Russia cutting back on military activity in Kiev and Chernihiv. An impression of scale down was created. Через тем, что переговоры по подготовке договора нейтралитета о безъядерном статусе Украины, а также предоставление Украине Украине гарантии безопасности, переходят в практическую плоскость. С учетом обсужденных в ходе сегодняшней встречи принципов, Министерство обороны Российской Федерации в целях повышения взаимного доверия и создания необходимых условий для дальнейшего ведения переговоров и достижения конечной. But the reality is far from it. The governor of Chernihiv region says there is no let up in Russian attacks. Вчора росіяни публічно заявили про те, що вони зменшують свої наступальні дії і активність на Чернігівському та Київському напрямку. Чи віримо ми в це? Ну, звісно, ні. І ми готові до будь-якого розвитку подій і зустрічати ворога на Чернігівщині. Moments after the big statement made by the negotiating team from the Russian side about a cutback, there was shelling that was taking place in Kiev and Chernihiv. In fact, the mayor of Chernihiv has now come on record to say that over the last few hours, they've seen multiple missile strikes taking place in the region. The people of Ukraine are shaken but ready for a fight. Uh, I remember that uh, that people uh, was uh, they were scared at this day. Uh, they uh, they didn't understand what happened. He feels very sorry for all of the people. Uh, it doesn't matter what language you speak, what God do you pray for, right? Uh, he feels sorry about all of the law. Ами їхні хоробрі та ефективні дії змушують ворога відходити на цьому напрямку. Проте не варто втрачати пильність. Ситуація не стала легшою. Масштаб викликів не зменшився. Російська армія все ще має значний потенціал для продовження атак проти нашої держави. The West is warning that Russia's claims of a military cutback must be taken with a pinch of salt. Has there been some movement by some Russian units away from Kyiv uh, in the last day or so? Yeah, we think so. Small numbers. But we believe that this is a repositioning, not a real withdrawal. Russia has failed in its objective of capturing Kyiv. It's failed in its objective of subjugating Ukraine. But they can still inflict massive brutality on the country, including on Kyiv. We see that even today in continued airstrikes against the capital city. I don't think a lot. Um, we judge 
the Russian military machine by its actions, not just its words. There's obviously some scepticism that it will regroup to attack again, uh, rather than seriously engage in diplomacy or anything of that nature. Um, of course, the, the door to diplomacy will always be left ajar, but I don't think you can trust what is coming out of the mouth of Putin's war machine. But the Western response has been lacking. It was, he was saying also that we need those countries, NATO members, to do something to block Russian uh, ships, of, uh, just to block Russian pres presence and avoid the rising of it uh, in Black Sea. There seems to be little reason to believe Team Putin's declarations right from the beginning when Russia has been maintaining that this is a military operation where they were targeting only military installations. What turned out on the ground is that the Russian troops were targeting maternity hospitals, schools as well as residential buildings. question remains, if there is no scale down today, if Putin has no ceasefire in mind, is it because of West's warmongering and what's Putin's final play? Let's debate. From Moscow, Victoria Panova is Vice President for International Relations of the Far East Federal University. Um, and WTO official representative for Russia. Dr. Daria Dugina is a political analyst from Moscow and Nikita Mentovic is also joining us from Moscow. Uh, I'm joined from, uh, from Virginia by Colonel Rich Outson, uh, from, uh, from, uh, from Ohio by Sherry Goodman. She is, General, is Secretary General of the International Military Council on Climate and Security and former Deputy Undersecretary of Defense. Uh, and. Professor Stephen Fish from the University of California in Berkeley. My first question is to uh, Sviat Sviatoslav Yurash, Member of Parliament from Ukraine. Uh, just want to start by asking you, Mr. Yurash, yesterday the, the Russia's Deputy Defense Minister Alexander Fomin had said that, the, 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 that Russia would radically by several times reduce military activity around Kiev and around Cherniev. Uh, is that the reality on the ground? Have the Russians sort of pulled back or scaled down their military activity? Russian lies are well known all around the world and are well known in Ukraine. So as far as the activity around Kiev, I've been to date one. Standing right now near another part of the front line and Russians have not done anything at all to show that. I was just speaking with the commander of my unit who was speaking about the on the road to the west of Kiev and are ongoing right now. The reality is Russians are lying, lying through their teeth to the whole of the world when they speak about Russians. And there is no reason whatsoever to trust any of their words and claims. Uh, so so on, on the ground, absolutely no difference. So, so can, you, can you tell me why is that the case, uh, Victoria Panova? Your government gave a, gave a commitment gave a commitment, Victoria uh, Panova, yeah. that, that there would be a reduction in military activity. Was, was that a stunt? Okay, uh, so first of all, I'm speaking, uh, I'm giving my personal opinions, not in official capacity, obviously. So uh, one thing to remind, it's interesting to hear emotional uh, communication on the part of from the previous speaker, but um, the point is, it's very interesting how our opponents are ready to misuse, misinterpret uh, what's been actually agreed on. And if you read attentively into the official clay, uh, Minister of Defense, and nowadays we do look, look into um, those statements, it said that uh, there is a rescaling on two directions in order to complete the ultimate task of freeing Donbas region. Uh, similarly, we've been witnessing uh, something uh, very much the same on the Ukrainian side, unfortunately, with the Minsk agreements and uh, uh, unfortunately with the guarantors from the West when those Minsk agreements were not honored no, the, the, by see, Ukrainian side and nobody was Ms. Panova, what actually the, what the Ukrainian side about honoring what the, it. So what this the, is about yeah. the same. 
What, what the Ukrainian Sorry. side is saying, what the Ukrainian side is saying, Ms. Panova, and I'd like to get uh, Sherry Goodman on this, they are saying, and, and I'll be very blunt about it, they are saying uh, that, that, the, that the Russia is lying through its teeth. And there were three yard long talks, we can't deny, between Ukraine and Russia. And after the talks ended, Russia's Deputy Defense Minister made a commitment of a reduction in military activity. I'm just asking you whether that commitment is happening on the ground and you're saying that the Ukrainian member of parliament is being emotional. Was the, was the Russian minister emotional when he made the commitment? He made the commitment, no. Ms. Panova. He made the commitment. What I'm saying is that there was a commitment they claimed in Istanbul, there was a commitment. Scaling. Rescaling. So there is a misinterpretation on what's been agreed. Uh, those suggestions, so they say there was a good progress because first time the Ukrainian side has put on the in writing its suggestions in terms of the future peace agreement. Where, so where is uh, the, this was good progress because we have never seen that before. During but, but is there a rescaling? Uh, ongoing is, is there a rescaling? I don't see a rescaling. Uh, Ms. Goodman. Ms. Goodman, the Russians say there has been a rescaling and uh, maybe the expectations on the other side are too high. Well, I think as Pentagon spokesman uh, John Kirby said, you know, we, we haven't seen that withdrawal of uh, forces yet. And, um, you know, the Russian military has not performed, I think, as Putin expected. They've had a lot of challenges. They've performed poorly. And the Ukrainians have put up a very stiff fight and been very brave. Um, and uh, so and now I, I think that, you know, Putin has become desperate here for something that he can claim as a victory and he can bring back uh, to his people um, and to, to leave with some kind of face. But I, I, he certainly cannot be trusted in this regard. And it's not surprising that he or his representatives would say one thing at the meeting with the Ukrainians and then go do something completely different. This has been his, uh, you know, this has been his uh, uh, story all along. Yeah. So I don't, I think that we have to, Place but our, then, uh, but then, you know, we have to place our actions not on intents. Yeah, yeah. I, I want I want to give a chance to Mr. Yurash to respond because uh, before he leaves, and and Mr. Yurash, you heard there, uh, Victoria Panova said from Moscow that you're being emotional. He said you're being emotional in your response. You're not being rational in your response. She says there's been a rescaling. You heard her. Would you like to respond to her or to or to Daria Dugina in Moscow? Anyone? my people by the thousands every day when they're destroying our cities all across my country when the missiles from russia are hitting every part of ukraine and when again when i go to the north of kiev and as the fighting continuing to the west of kiev and fighting is continuing to speak about emotions to speak about the reality that our nation is not fighting for its life against that country will just destroy our nation so the point here is not about emotions about the reality that we are fighting here for our very existence and when Russians speak about emotions, they need to look in the mirror and see that they need to feel the same emotions that they see us being killed every single day on every single TV, except for the Russian TV. And they need to understand judged for the future generations for this moment, when they were essentially ignoring this and they were trying to pretend it doesn't, it is not happening. They will be judged as harshly as those that were watching the world wars, killing people by the millions and doing nothing by it. So look in the mirror and see that person who's still trying to not see the reality the whole world is seeing and judges you for. Yeah, I mean, you know, uh, uh, Daria and Nikita, you're hearing, you're hearing uh, Svatoslav, uh, Svatoslav uh, Yurash there from Kiev. But, but, the, but the point is, uh, I don't want to be too subtle about it. Uh, uh, Dari, Daria, Dr. Dugina, did, did Russia lie? after the talks or during the talks i mean is that okay nikita you want to you raise your hand there if is russia lying and 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 is it is it just using the talks to buy time you know uh, to make its big uh, move no uh, russia the uh, russia don't need to buy time russia is not lying the problems uh, with lie we have with ukraine because in istanbul we have talks we have uh, we thought we have a base for uh, for a peace treaty because ukraine said 
okay, we are yes. ready not to attack Crimea and Don Donbass. Uh, we said, okay, it's a good step forward. And when uh, the dialogue uh, finished, Ukraine side said, oh, it, it wasn't the thing we uh, talk about. We mean it will take 15 years, we would not attack uh, Crimea. And later, everything may be. It was uh, what said uh, uh, publicly about uh, what was said publicly by Ukrainian side. Of course, it looks Professor. terrible when Professor. the man who, who just tried to kill you now, uh, now says, tomorrow I wouldn't try it again, but later maybe. Of course, uh, uh, Ukraine side broke. Who's the trying to kill? No, who, who's lied. the aggressor here? It publicly lied. Nikita, you're making Ukraine yes, sound uh, like an aggressor here. Yo, you're, you're making Sorry? Ukraine sound like an aggressor here. I want to go to, I want to go to yes, Stephen Fish. Of course, uh, you're making Ukraine, Ukraine sound like an aggressor here. I'm being very specific. Aggressive. No, 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 one minute. Dr. Dr. Dugina, one minute. One minute, one minute. Just one minute. Please, Just one minute. Whoa, 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 one minute. I, 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 I want to go to finish. Professor Don't Stephen Fish here. Me. See, I, I am, I am, I am. I, I am interrupting you if you don't mind for a minute, please, because I need to make a counterpoint. Can I please? Uh, as I yeah, said, but I have a Ukraine slight point of disagreement with you. Can I counter you? Started the war. Please give me a chance to answer. Ukraine is a country who started this war. It prepared aggression <laughs> against Republic of Donbas, against Russian Crimea and Cuba. Uh, in fact, Russia just prevented uh, this aggression. No, 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 I, Ukraine I, have eight years. Okay. I, I know. Uh, eight I know that. You see. time to kill people in Donbas. Of course, now Russians want guarantees no, from I... Ukrainian side. They said they will stop killing of Russian people in Donbass and yeah. uh, that they would not attack Crimea. And they said, no, we wouldn't do it for you... 15 years. And maybe later, when NATO will produce but, but the times... us more weapons, uh, but, but we the... will try again. It's terrible. How can no. we have a dialogue with this terrible yeah, murder yeah, yeah. I mean, you... who openly saying we are going to kill you? Yeah, I, I have, I have a. What we you, should you know, do? Who is you know, who is a liar you, here? you know, you know, you know. No, 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 no uh, Mr. Benkovich, Mr. Benkovich, you know that I have, I have a very strong views about very. Just one minute. I have very strong views about about American hypocrisy, and I think that America has a lot to ponder over. Very, very much. I, I, and you and I are on the same page on that. But, but I can't believe that you're trying to make Russia look like the victim here. The fact is, I'm asking a very specific the, question the on that. I'm going to Professor Fish. The there are talks in Istanbul. There, there are talks. Allow me, Mr. Menkovich, you allow me to speak when, when you agree with me. You, you try to interrupt me when, when you disagree with me. Just a minute. Professor Fish, my specific question is, there are talks. There are talks. And during talks, there are commitments. And the commitment, Professor Fish, is of a military cutback. Now, if there's a promise of a military cutback, after that, how does Russia strike a Red Cross facility in Mariupol? Right? Uh, there, are, there are 12 this people killed in an attack in Mykolaiv. Uh, right. Yeah, yeah prof right. my, my point is, is that cutback really happening? Yes, Professor Fish. No, there's no cutback going on at all. This We've seen this before. Remember, before the invasion, uh, Putin was saying at one point, after amassing a great number of troops along the border, or oh, we're not going to invade, and he pretended to pull back a few a few troops. American intelligence reported that there'd been no cutback, indeed there wasn't, and then he attacked. Similarly, we hear yesterday that, we're, that the Russians say they're going to withdraw their pressure on Kiev and Cherniv. And today, and today we have we have massive bombings of, of Chernyi. You you know the thing about about Putin is and his people and his spokesman and the guests you have here is that you know they're living in such a world of lies. Perhaps they believe their own lies. They believe that black is is white and white is black. I don't think they do if they're intelligent. But they seem to be so brainwashed that they believe what they're being told on TV. They really think they're going in to denazify a country that doesn't even have a, a strong right-wing party in parliament. I mean, a, a chauvinist party in parliament that has a Jewish president and a Jewish prime minister. And the claim that somehow Ukraine poses a threat to Russia and Ukraine has been invading Russia, the whole thing is a pack of lies. When these people, when it would be easier to tell the truth what you find Peskov and Putin doing is they'll lie anyway. So of course we can't trust anything they say. That's just something that we know now is, is a part of this conflict. And this is just the way the Russian government under Putin acts. 
how people can still uh, Dr. Zubina, can still uh, before right. I go to reach out. Yeah, yeah, please. Yeah, I mean, how people yeah, can still uh, believe Putin's lies. You, it's absolutely unbelievable. Are you addressing me or, or her? Uh, you, please carry on, please complete, sir. Okay, I think I think we're getting an into a, a counter from Moscow. So, Professor Fish, one minute, uh, Doctor Doctor Dugina, let's be practical about it. Are you using the talks to buy time? You First know, of all, uh, let me. Uh, 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 Professor Fish meant, mentioned mm -hmm. mentioned Ch 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 Cherniev. Allow, allow me. You see, did the Russian Deputy Defense Minister lie? Lie? about scaling down in Chernihiv to take over the city by lowering Ukraine's guard. If not, then my specific question, Dr. Dugina, is why else did Russia continue to bombard the city all night long after a scale down promise? Can you specifically answer my very specific question there? Uh, the aim of Russia, and as we see now with the talks, is to solve the situation uh, at maximum level of peace. So Russia is installing peace now with these uh, talks, with these important conversations. What I would like to say, there were very important, uh, important points said by my Russian colleagues and Mr. Nikita about uh, the fact that uh, Ukraine was not uh, not following its own accordances, Minsk accordances. Uh, for eight years. The thing is that I was reading the French political experts and their analysis about uh, the situation, about the conflict, potential conflict, and I've seen there the very important note from the French observer Thierry Messan, who was also working in Syria, who said that Russia didn't stop this escalation, Ukraine did. And actually, when he was analyzing the reports from the Organization for Security and Cooperation in Europe, have seen that from the uh, 17th of February, with their war from uh, the beginning of 17th of February till 22 of February, uh, 1,400 explosions. Uh, and actually that uh, shows that Ukraine was and was uh, launching the special uh, operation against Donetsk. So Russia was no, not no, I, I, the part which started I, the war. I'm just, it was, it was, I'm um, the, I, no, no, I'm, I'm, was, I'm, no, no, Dr. Dugina, Dr. Dugina, so, so Dr. Dugina, if so I may, impressive. Dr. Dugina, if I may, I, I just want to run some pictures that just came in. One second. I just, I just want to run some pictures that just came in right now, and, and, and I'll play them full frame, uh, uh, Colonel Rich Outson. This is just a video I've got from the Russian Defense Ministry, right? So it's an official Russian video, and over the text of the video, it says that the Russian armed forces, in the course of a special military operation, continue to strike precision-guided, multiple precision-guided missiles, right? So they are saying that we are uh, we, at what they are saying are military infrastructure facilities and military equipment of the armed forces of Ukraine. And you'll see here, uh, they've just put out this video of the latest missile strikes being carried out, all very impressively short. Uh, and, they're, uh, and they're showing how the missile is, is being, a number of missiles are, are taking off. And they are saying that these are Iskandar operational tactical missile systems that have been involved. So you have these pictures on one side, and on the other side, the promise of de-escalation. What I'm asking is, this doesn't look like de-escalation, Rich Outson, and I think, Nikita, you should say it then. We are not de-escalating, we're escalating. How can you say two things at the same time? <laughs> I, one minute, I'd, I'd like Colonel Outson to come in. Yes, Colonel Outson, please. These are latest visuals of Iskandar missiles being fired that are Russian Defense Army sources. Yes, please. Uh, Colonel Outson. Thank you, Arnab. Thank you, Arnab. It's good to be here uh, with you again. Just three quick things. Uh, the first is I would like to congratulate on behalf of the international community, our Russian colleagues, for weaving together such an intricately uh, deceptive uh, uh, viewpoint here, this mosaic of lies that they've put forth. It's sort of like the movie in Casablanca, where they uh, come in to do the arrests at the end of the movie, and the French inspector, who knew the whole time that gambling was going on in Rick's place, uh, professes to be shocked. I'm shocked to find out that there is gambling going on. Uh, it's sort of the same thing with our Russian friends here who are absolutely shocked to find out that there's violence going on in a country that they invaded that's defending its own territory. Every place that we've just talked about, Donetsk, Luhansk, the Crimea, by the way, 
are part of Ukraine. And all the fighting that's going on and the 1,100 explosions, I'm sure that's an undercount, are in fact actions of defense against the war that Putin launched to aggressively seize most of Ukraine and subordinate it in the name of this fantastical claim of denazification and demilitarization. It is absurd. And had Kafka not already, uh, on, on behalf of the Central European peoples, uh, laid claim to the title of the best uh, absurdist in the history of literature, I would give it to our Russian friends here. The second point I would make is that uh, they are engaging no, no, on your show well, one here. Second, one second, on the Casablanca the response. Sure. On the Casablanca reference, I have a question. I have a, on the Casablanca reference, I have, a, I have a response to you. I have a response to you. I, on the Casablanca reference, yes. uh, can you can you please tell me what kind of fiction it was that the U.S. Uh, indulged in it, it lied in the Security Council, presenting proofs about WMTs and anthrax in Iraq? So maybe I can argue here that the, the, the uh, that the Russians are only following the American example. Well, that's like that's a fair point, it. and I would say that the the misuse of information and intelligence is something we learned from at great cost after the Iraq War. I myself. Uh, was forced to uh, experience part of that conflict. And I will tell you, the American people have learned a deep lesson from how information uh, was was abused to justify a wrongful war. I would submit that our Russian friends are 19 years behind that experience. Take it from us. We know a casus belli when we see one, and we know lies when we see them. And what the Russians are laying out before you now- and Nikita is responding uh, to you, sir. As Colonel Lao said, Nikita is responding. I, I, see, I see Professor Fish also wants to make a, and no, Professor Fish also wants to come back. I'm gonna save time by going straight to Nikita and then coming back to Please. Professor Fish. Yes, Nikita, you see, I admit it, you are using the talks to buy time. You are using the talks to regroup and launch counter offensives. Uh, and, no, and it's looking no, to the whole world no like you're using the talks time. to regroup and remove yourself, uh, and remove yourself from no. places where you've run out of food and logistics. And so this is a stopgap measure. That's right. Uh, no, and one more time, no. Uh, it is Ukraine who doesn't want to de-escalate. It is Ukraine who, after talks in Istanbul, tried to attack and recapture city of Kherson using artillery. It was Ukraine who, Victoria. after talks, uh, committed attacks city. against Donetsk city, where they attacks not military objects, All right. but uh, but just houses of All ordinary right. people. My friend is do in Donetsk, was uh, half killed uh, uh, last uh, day for two times, two times. She, she was not in any military object, objects. She was just bu That's buying impressive. food and medicines for local people. And Ukrainian artillery was attacking at points where uh, th those people tried to hide. It is Ukraine who doesn't want to de-escalate. It is Ukraine who is trying to buy time. No, no, one minute, one minute, one minute, just one, one, one minute, one minute, one minute. Yeah, can I give you a counter perspective? Because no, no, can I give you a counter perspective? Because may what I, you're doing, I'm, I'm coming to you, Professor Fish is on the debate, and Sherry Goodman I'm, I'm is there. They'll both respond to you. All right, go on, respond. respond. Professor Fish. Professor Fish is field. responding, Nikita. Yeah. Professor Fish is responding to you. Please listen, listen to him. Listen. Please go listen. on. It, all Russia has done this. All Russia has. All Russia has done this whole time. All Russia has done this whole time is lie. Lie, lie, lie. That's what Putin does. He lies, like I said, even when it's easier not to lie. But there are certain realms, and war is one of them, where the lies actually don't work. The fact is, is that Russia claimed to have this mightiest military, and they were going to be really, really a tough fighting force. They're going to roll over Ukraine in a matter of days. Well, guess what? When they get to Ukraine, it turns out that the tanks include all kinds of cheap knockoff parts. And the, the uh, refueling trucks are, are fitted with such cheap tires that they fray and they go flat after you've been driving on them for a couple of hundred miles. So the military equipment isn't even serviceable. What's more, half of the missiles that Russia is launching don't explode. They just don't explode at all. Now, you know, and the well, soldiers don't want to is, fight. Is Russia, does, <laughs> Russia does not have a military, it doesn't have an air force, it doesn't have an army. They can't take control of the Ukrainian skies, even though the Ukrainians are vastly outnumbered with, with military <laughs> equipment. What we're seeing here really, is they really simply don't statement. have a military. Thanks. They don't have a military. This They can be stopped <laughs> okay. by these Ukrainian okay. civilians okay. and armed forces, no, no. Ukrainian armed I'm, forces. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. India has to consider right now. I'm speaking. I'm speaking right now. I'm speaking right now. Hang on. What you, what down. India is now going to have to consider. I know that you got a great deal. I know you get a great deal of military equipment from Russia, and I know that. But Prime Minister Modi must now be thinking 
Look at the quality of that military equipment. It breaks down. Soldiers abandon it. It completely reduces morale. The students who actually, the, the soldiers in the tanks on the first day of the conflict, when they opened their food rations, they saw that they expired in, 2000, oh, in 2002. They expired 20 years ago. They're provided by this Yevgeny Prigozhin, who, who Putin, you know, Putin asks to do these kinds of culinary tasks for him. With that kind of equipment, it would behoove the Indian government, Prime Minister Modi, well, to minute. rethink if this is where you want your tanks and trucks to come from. I know India is very dependent on military goods from, from Russia. The fact is, is that if you're going to sustain your international commitments to protecting your own territory against an expansionist China, as well as meet your commitments along the border with Pakistan, you're going to need much better military equipment than that. You're going to need tanks that work, missiles that explode, guns that actually work. And of course, this manufacturers in Russia, is, the, the problem with these manufacturers is that, you know, they, yeah, prof the professor, in the, in the professor, you know, you professor, may I, may I just come? May I, may I, may I, may I just come in? May I, may I, may I, may I just come in? May I just Please. come in for a minute? And I, thank you for for your for your advice. Um, uh, you know, I'm sure all this unsolicited advice is very, very, very nice when it's given from the American side. I just want to tell you that you know, I just find the moral position of America very uncertain here. Though I don't want to get drawn into that argument, I'd like to remind you, Professor, you, you are a professor of, of political science at the University of California, Berkeley, and therefore, therefore, you would be, allow me to complete, sir, I'm speaking, you would be very aware uh, uh, that the U.S. troops are secretly present in 22 African nations. And I would say to you that who is America to say how Russia should not be trusted on their claims of reducing military operations when recent investigations have revealed that the U.S. Special Operations Forces are deployed in at least 22, 22 African countries taking part in quote-unquote direct action operations which ordinary Africans are rarely told about. Please find out what's happening in Mali, Mauritiana, Niger, Nigeria, Senegal, Somalia, I know. Djibouti, Cameroon, I know Burkina Faso, Algeria, Ethiopia, Ghana, Kenya, Libya, sir, Tanzania, sir, sir, Tunisia. What, what sir, please. To, sir, please, sir. Please, sir, please, sir. No, 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 one minute, one minute, one minute, one minute, one minute, one minute. What, what does it have to do? Okay, so all I'm saying is that was in the response to the question of Russia reducing military operations. And uh, my point is that the Americans are operating in a covert way in several countries trying to influence democracies where they have no right to be. That was the context. That was a specific. We're, I we're never speak out of context, Professor. That was the specific you know, context. That's completely irrelevant. That's completely irrelevant are, to this conflict with Ukraine. No, it's Ukraine completely relevant. No, no, I, no, no. It's 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 completely it's completely it's completely relevant. I I I'll, I'll tell you why. It's I, okay, Professor Fish. Professor Fish. Okay, okay. I'm willing to argue this out with you. No, no, no. I'm willing to argue out with you. I I would say this to you, Professor Fish. Professor Fish. Professor Fish. Allow me to complete. I'm, I'm countering you. I'm countering you. I'm countering you now, Professor Fish. Me, I'm countering you. Why don't you ask anyone? You. Why, why you are you are saying? Now I'm speaking to you as well. And my point to you specifically is this whole argument that others are duplicitous and we are not. Others carry out games of treachery in global affairs. Argument. And we don't. When no I hear that from that the argument. Americans, when I when I when I when I when I hear that from the Americans, I, I cannot point. stop but laugh because the point. Americans are not ratifying the UN Convention on the Laws of the Sea in full. The Americans are not ratifying the UN Convention of the Law of Seas in full. You don't even respect international maritime laws. So, Professor, please, uh, I'm not, I know, please, please, we'll have to have a longer conversation. Yeah, I will time. invite you. I will invite you. We'll have a longer conversation on this subject one Please day. Please do. Please do. Okay, so, but, but for, so here's the thing. Yes, I will. It's true that I, the United I, I States absolutely does those intend things. to. It is not. I intend to. It is not. I, not, I intend to. It, but it, my point right now is, my point right now is, my point right now is, Daria, Daria, I see and, and Victoria. You reported it. See, You've things have to come. Many times. The fact is, this does not have anything to do with. Yeah, yes, I, I, I do May repeat I it many times, but, no but no professor, no professor, but professor, I, I also United back States it up with my with facts. Daria is responding to you. This is a good debate.
Daria is responding to you. It's a good debate. Yes. Daria, responding <laughs> yes. Professor Fish. Sir, yes, quickly. Yes. It can be a good debate yes, if you please. be quiet sometimes. Yes, please. Uh, I would like uh, to say only one thing. It was very funny to uh, to hear about uh, the armaments, but the professor from California has confused uh, U.S. and Russia. U.S. had uh, given to Ukraine the javelins, which had the expired date. And we, with our trade with India, in rubles, by the way, and rupees, which was installed in December, December, it is very productive. We speak as a partner. India for us is a partner. For US, Ukraine was not a partner. It is a slave. So the era of the unipolarity is in the back times. Now it's the era of the civilizations, of different oh, civilizations. We have great Indian civilization, Russian civilization, is Islamic civilization, civilization American civilizations as well. But please face this reality. The unipolarity is All over. Right. The ideological this hegemonical very uh, model of the this liberalism is, is of the West. Very hard, very really 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 running short of time, no, we go back to the larger issue of unipolarity when all I'm talking about is whether we respect what was promised in Istanbul. Rich Outson. So one thing I, I uh, want to point out here is that negotiations in war are not binary opposites. In most cases, countries who are engaged in warfare also engage in negotiations. We should not be shocked and we should not be surprised that the Russians continue to lie uh, while they are negotiating and fighting. That's fine. I don't blame them at all for that. To, to be honest with you, I don't think any serious people took Russia's uh, protestations that it would scale back as a good confidence measure or a confidence building measure. Nobody really believed that. What we've got here is a very yeah. cynical, uh, one-sided aggression by Russia against Ukrainian territory, killing civilians, doing those things. I want Knowing what they are, understanding the nature of this war, we have to expect that until yeah. their military offensive is broken, yeah. they will not actually scale back. So let's not be surprised by that. Uh, but, but I think, I, I think Rich, 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 I, I think, and I want to go to Sherry Goodman on this. I've had this view, some say it's too radical. I feel that just America and Russia should come to the table right now. This proxy thing is not working, uh, uh, Sherry Goodman. You know, this proxy thing is dangerous. I think it's better if America, Russia talk and if, if required, other significant nations can also participate in those talks. Well, um, I mean, that's a very that's a very interesting question. But of course, uh, we're right there close to NATO and um, NATO territory. And this has to be resolved, I think, between Russia and Ukraine, of course, we're providing a lot of the U.S. is providing a lot of support to Ukraine, as are many other countries. I think we can't. I think that Putin is trying to look for some kind of face saving measure here where he can declare some sort of victory, but reduce the losses he's already suffered. Um, but that could go on for some time with more devastation and more destruction across Ukraine. Uh, and loss of yeah. life for Russians. Let's be clear that this is not good for Russia either. I mean, the people of Russia are also suffering. Uh, their economy is in the tubes. Their lives and livelihoods are being um, devastated as well. So I, I also want to say the Russian people are losing here too. Um, everyone is losing, maybe except for Putin, who is yeah. tr essentially trying to save face. Um, and in the end, I think the the... A uh, unified yeah. coalition of NATO and allies and other countries around the world. And I'd say, um, you know, I count India potentially in this as well, need to stand up and stand for, um, you know, stand up for With, the, the right of a democracy yes. to defend itself. Yeah, yes, uh, Ms. Ms. Goodman, uh, to the limited point that India's role India's future role is all being looked at closely okay. because of a want of time before I end. I want to say this viewers, whether India likes it or not, the fact is the whole world is looking at India. Both sides are looking at India. We don't want to play a role in this, but it's interesting that both sides are, are now beginning to lobby a lot in India. And that only shows India's significant global position. The Russian foreign minister is coming here on a two day visit. In the middle of all this, Lavrov, a controversial man, landing in Delhi tomorrow, on the, on the uh, and so and so the focus will be a lot. The, the focus will be a lot on what, uh, how, how India can play a role in de-escalating this. I thank you all very much. That's been very interesting. And finally, ladies and.